گفتگوی خواهم داشت با آقای شریف باکا رئیس پلیس لس آنجلس تا لحظات دیگر توجه فرمایید Well, I want to say to the Iranian audience worldwide, uh, we are watching what's going on in Iran from the United States. Uh, we know that you are very supportive and love American people, but we also, you also need to know that American people love Iranian people. And I have many friends in Iran who live there. I won't mention them. Uh, I also met the police chief of Tehran a couple of years ago in Lyon, France. spoke with him, quoted a couple of verses from the Quran. He was very, very cordial about those verses. بیننده محترم اگر برای تماشای چنین گفتگوهای اجتماعی و سیاسی علاقمند هستید، لطفاً با حمایت مالی خود به دین وسیله از شبکه MTC اعلام نمایید. شبکه ملی تیوی طرفتار عقاید شماست تلفن اطلاعات بیشتر با سلام و درود حضور شما عزیزان شبکه MTC من شهرام هاشمی زاده هستم و از شما دعوت می کنم در برنامه پولیتریکا ریویو در این برنامه که گفتگوی خواهم داشت با آقای شریف باکا رئیس پلیس لس آنجلس تا لحظات دیگر توجه فرمایید Welcome, Sharif Boko. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you for taking time and uh, come to the uh, speak with our viewers. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, my first question is: as of the one of the most trusted peace officer in the land, what do you see in the future of California in United States relation anti-crime, racism, and problem Muslim phobia. What mm. do you see? 
Well, first of all, California is the largest state in the United States. There's over 38 million people who live here. And there may be more once the census is finished. Uh, I think California is the capital of the world. Every nation has people here from around the world. And we have the largest Iranian population uh, in the world in Los Angeles County, as well as California. The future is simple that from a public safety point of view, a crime fighting point of view, we have to work internationally as well as locally. Uh, this is why I have a very big Muslim outreach program because in America today, uh, many Americans do not take time to research issues. And if they don't take time to understand Islam, Islam is a faith that is based on peace, love, and justice, not terrorism, not crime. In fact, it is very strong against crime. Unfortunately, uh, the hijackers and the people who are the terrorists uh, are largely people who are not representing Islam, but happen to be of the Islamic uh, culture or faith. So the difficulty in America is to understand that religion has nothing to do with terrorism. God does not send messages to Americans or to Iranians or to Pakistanis or to Africans or to Chinese and say, I'm ordering you to kill in my name. A common sense tells you that man, before there was any religion, uh, was constantly at war with other human beings. So the strategy of putting the religion into the acts of criminals and terrorists, and they're both the same, is wrong. And we in the United States need to continue to look at the Quran ourselves. In the Quran, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is referred to. In the Quran, Judaism is referred to. And actually, there's words in the Quran that say that to be a good Muslim, you honor Christianity and you honor Judaism. So a lot of this misunderstanding is going to be eventually sorted out, but it's going to take a while. Can you share about uh, what you see to secure the future of California, especially with the crime relation with the Mexico right now we have and drug? Uh, the crime problems with Mexico and within Mexico and then the drug problem in the United States and California is the largest state in the United States is simple. Uh, Americans need to stop using illegal drugs or any other kind of drugs because all the drugs do is destroy the brain. Not right away, but in time. It kills the d blood cells. The word is perfusion. I have a book here written by a doctor, Daniel Amen, and it talks about how brain cells are killed. So first thing is Californians and Americans need to stop using illegal drugs because it's harmful to their brains. Mexico supplies drugs through cartels to the United States because the United States wants the drugs. I'm working with the Mexican police, as is the Los Angeles Police Department, 
and the Drug Enforcement Administration of the United States. And what we're trying to do is professionalize the Mexican police at the local level. And I've had meetings with former President Vicente Fox, the, the mayor of Leon, and the mayor of Guanajuato. And we've also met with the mayor of Tijuana and the police chief of Tijuana. And the whole strategy is to help increase and improve the professionalism of the Mexican police system. The future is often a part of the past and is going to be con continue to be a part of the past. The crime of what's going on with Americans and drugs has been going on for over 45 years in a very intense way. It's going to go on perhaps even the next 45 years. I'm urging everyone in California to vote no against Proposition 19, which would legalize marijuana. Uh, we can't afford illegal drugs in this country, particularly in this depressed economy. The health care will go up, so this is going to happen. The health care costs will continue to rise as long as Americans are consuming drugs. In our viewers, we have many who are interested applying and begin train and become the officer. Do you have any suggestion for the people or Iranian American they want to apply? Yes, uh, I would like to recruit more Iranians into the Sheriff's Department. And I will set up a special test so that the process for applications uh, will be individualized. So I encourage any Iranian uh, a person who's watching this, Iranian American person who's watching this program, uh, to apply to be a deputy sheriff. Just call my office at area code 323-526-5000. That's area code 323-526-5000. And ask about how you can be a deputy sheriff and we'll have someone talk to you and explain it to you. But the future of law enforcement should include a lot of Iranians in the law enforcement field, including the LAPD and the Sheriff's Department combined. But I'm asking that the Sheriff's Department be involved, particularly also if you're a Muslim American of any background. I'm working with Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Emirates, Jordan, Pakistan, Turkey, right now with our police professionalism and our diplomacy. And so there's a place for people who have more than one talent. I think being uh, an Islamic believer is a talent and it offers a lot of support to society and it gives a lot of support to people. So whether you're Islamic Iranian or whether you're Jewish Iranian or whether you're Christian yes. Iranian, the culture of Iran is very important to America, and we want to continue to support our diversity. So that's why I think it's a good thing uh, for you to apply, and we'll be happy to help you process. It seems to me it's, um, this is also excellent uh, way to, or for us to be uh, unite and merge with the community of the LA. Yes, and we have volunteers if you don't want to be a deputy sheriff, and we also have a reserve program. So if you have your own profession, I have many Muslim reserve deputy sheriffs. Uh, one of them, a uh, lady named Zora. I mean, and you probably heard of Zora. She's a lawyer. And the key to all of what I'm saying is, is that women should also be in law enforcement. My search suggests that you are focusing on hiring women and goal is to hire 20.11% women. Is this because you want to balance of the man and woman 
you have too many men. What does that mean? I want women to understand that law enforcement is a great career. It gives you benefits, medical, retirement. It's helping people, obviously. And there's so many different jobs, over 250 types of work that deputies do. It isn't just one kind of work. But I think the goal is to balance the organization. And if I had 50% women and 50% men, that would be ideal. Uh, but right now we're looking for the organization to be 25% women, 75% men. Once we get to 25%, we'll go to 30%. We'll just keep on growing. What is the direction that uh, the Homeland Security is taking? Do you see really terrorists as a real threat in the United States? Uh, there's no doubt that terrorism is a real threat in the United States. Uh, as you can tell in the past several years, uh, young men recruited out of the United States were born here, uh, have been trying to join up with jihadists you know, through Pakistan and into actual areas uh, within Afghanistan and Pakistan. And they've been captured, uh, fortunately. Uh, we've had uh, young men who are from other parts of the world, Nigeria, uh, wanting to blow up an airplane with a bomb on his waist that he wasn't successful in doing. So there are people who are unbalanced, unstable, uh, perhaps living uh, uninteresting lives, and they see jihad as some uh, aspect of being a hero. Uh, incidentally, uh, there's no such thing as virgins in heaven, and there's no such things as killing and going to heaven and being with God. Uh, if you're a person who thinks that that's the possibilities of why terrorism is attractive, I've got news for you. Uh, God is not a terrorist, and I don't think God is interested in terrorism. Uh, and I say that in all due candor because uh, all the religions go to the same place. We all worship the same God, uh, and thus uh, when we go to heaven, there's not going to be a place for Muslims, a place for Jews, a place for Christians. Everyone's going to have to be together. So a lot of the brainwashing that goes on uh, is still happening with some people here in the United States, but this is the way man's weaknesses are revealed. It's a weakness to think that you can get an easy ticket to heaven uh, by killing human beings. Uh, that is not going to happen. So the key to uh, young men and their problems is that they need to find another way of looking at success. But killing is not success. What can our average citizen to do help with our neighborhood and citizen communities? Well, I mean, you know, the Sheriff's Department has uh, 4,000 volunteers. That's what I would ask that people do. And I gave my phone number. And if you want to be a volunteer, uh, the number is 323-526-5000. But uh, we have volunteers in patrol. We have volunteers with little uniforms. They work uh, in various administrative posts. Uh, some of them are helping uh, with events. You know, we have many, many community events that we put on and the volunteers are there helping assemble the uh, circumstances of the events. So it's really important for public trust to be a part of law enforcement. We need the public's trust, and we have youth programs. Uh, you can volunteer with one of our 16 youth centers, uh, and uh, so we're t dealing with at-risk youth, and they need adult role models. And so there's a lot of opportunity with the Sheriff's Department.
Uh, Sharif Baka, you are one of the most respected law officers in U.S. And your mission is all about fairness, courage, and common sense. Do you have any idea how we can install those values into our youth and young adults? Well, thank you for that kind words that you just said. But, you know, here's the thing. Uh, I've been working with Iranian youth. Uh, we've had programs uh, where we try to help uh, the parents who are worried about, of course, drugs. You know, this is the big worry that sure. Iranian parents have. And, you know, the common sense of drugs is simply this, that it destroys your brain cells. It doesn't do it right away, but if you do it in three to five years, it will damage your memory cells. That inhibits you from being able to learn as much as you can. It also reduces the healthiness of your brain. It also leads to addiction. And there's studies that show that marijuana, for example, leads to uh, methamphetamine, leads to cocaine, and leads to heroin. So the key to common sense is why do you play with your mind in a careless negative way. Even alcohol destroys brain cells. So it's, I'm not talking about making alcohol a nicer, uh, a nicer form of addiction. Alcoholism is a major health problem in the United States today. So the f best thing is to just be very moderate uh, with alcohol and no illegal drugs at all. Uh, the mind is not designed for any kind of illegal drug. The other medical drugs, you have to use them if you have a cut hand, antibiotic, if you have to use painkillers, we understand. But the key to common sense is that you're only have, you only have one life to live. Your mind is your most important asset. You have to learn to manage it well. That's what common sense means. Fairness means that you're not out to harm someone else. Now I'll tell you what's unfair about narcotics that are illegal. It's unfair for Americans to consume those drugs and see all the murdering that's going on in Mexico because of Americans' use of drugs. And yet no one is taking responsibility. I've never met a person who's used illegal drugs that cares about the death that that use causes to other people to give them the drugs. So fairness means I don't want to do that. If my taking drugs is harming other people because they're trying to make money by my using the drugs and they're trying to get my money, then I have to stop giving them money. That's what they're fighting over. They're not just fighting over the drugs, they're fighting over the money that the Americans pay for the drugs. So fairness to the people who are often poor, most of the drug cartel leaders had no money until they started dealing drugs, and why are they dealing drugs? Because of Americans who don't care about them. All Americans want is the drug. That is not fair to those people in Mexico. And so uh, when we talk about common sense and fairness, and we talk about you know, having some values, our values should be that we want to protect all people, even from our own habits that are bad. And when you have a bad habit that causes death, you should change the habit. Thank you so much. Any other message uh, you'd like to uh, share it with our audience? Well, I want to say to the Iranian audience worldwide, uh, we are watching what's going on in Iran from the United States. Uh, we know that you are very supportive and love American people. But we also, you also need to know that American people love Iranian people. And I have many friends in Iran who live there. I won't mention them. Uh, I also met the police chief of Tehran a couple of years ago in Lyon, France. Spoke with him, quoted a couple of verses from the Quran. He was very, very cordial about those verses. Of course, he's been trained uh, to be suspicious of the United States. I suggest to anyone that lives in Iran, invite Americans to come to Iran. In fact, the Iranian government should have a policy that any American who would like to be a good tourist and spend their money and buy some good goods and see historical sites, enjoy the music, 
enjoy all the success that's in Iran, why not? That'll help the economy. So the key to what I'm saying is that governments can have their problems with each other, but people in Iran who are like people in the United States, we are not the problem. People to people is not the problem. The problem is government to government. God bless you and thank you for listening to me. We exchange the love. Exactly. Thank you so much. بیننده محترم اگر برای تماشای چنین گفتگوهای اجتماعی و سیاسی علاقمند هستید لطفا با حمایت مالی خود به دین وسیله از شبکه MTC اعلام نمایید شبکه ملی تیوی طرفتار عقاید شماست تلفن اطلاعات بیشتر 818-703-8212 818-703-8212 این سوال شما را از من نکرده